Welcome back, everyone, to CIS 125. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. As a reminder, the class is being recorded for class playback. So here we are in week seven of the class, and uh, we are continuing our two-week topic on um, story and plot and writing and that aspect of creativity. Obviously, this class focuses 99% of the time or so on visuals, but without a good idea, you're not going to have good visuals. And it's a good idea to plan things before you dive into the animation of things. You know, we haven't covered animation yet, but the drawing of things, adding music, and all that cool stuff that eventually we will we will do. As such, let's do a quick reminder of the syllabus. Uh, you might not have looked at the syllabus in a little while, and that's okay. But let's take a look at it together just to get our bearings. So here on the syllabus, um, we're on week seven. We're still talking about writing and plots and brainstorming and ideas. And notice on the previous weeks, we've done a couple of weeks on a particular topic, introduction to drawing, week two and three, uh, more drawing. Well, uh, then week two and three were also about characters. And then weeks four and five were about backgrounds. And now weeks six and seven are about writing and ideas and stories. Then we've got a midterm coming up. We'll come back to that in a moment. Then we've got spring break for a whole week, time off. And then the second half of the class is all about animation. I'll get back to that in a moment. So these two weeks here are about writing. There's an assignment due tomorrow that we started last week about writing. There'll be an assignment this week also about writing, which will be due next week. Next week will be the midterm. And I did say, say it in the module, and I'll also say it as an announcement, but I'll say it in person or here um, live, I mean. Uh, next week for the midterm, please plan on being in class in person for the midterm. If there are if if there's particular time and other factors that might get in the way, contact me privately on the inbox. But please, everyone, assume and plan on being here in person next week um, for the midterm test. There will be a test next week. I won't tell everything about what it is yet, but there will be an in-class test next week for the midterm because it's the middle of the term. So we'll have a test on it. It will be based on everything we've covered. So again, I won't reveal everything about it just yet, but it will be about using the various drawing tools of what we learned about in creating original characters, drawing tools about creating backgrounds, and writing in what we started to learn last week and this week. So those three big ideas, characters, backgrounds, and writing, that'll tie together into a midterm test next week. So please plan on being in person uh, next week. And again, if there is a legitimate reason and so forth, contact me via the inbox on Canvas um, to tell me about it and we can see about figuring it out. But everyone should be there. How long will it last? It will last as long as you need it. If you finish the test in 10 minutes, you're done. If you finish it in three hours, you're done. Um, um, so as long as you need the time to do the test, it'll take that long. Will you be offering critique on our backgrounds? Yes, exactly. That'll be part of today's thing as well, critiques. So as for next week, that'll be the midterm. Be there in person next week. Contact me if there's a, if, if there's a difficulty via the inbox. After that, then we will have the spring break. No class, any time off. Anyone planning on doing anything for spring break? Just chilling at home, doing a family vacation, just catching up on stuff, any plans and such. Uh, we're getting to spring, so it'll probably be a nice sunny, a nice sunny end of the month and uh, probably just stay at home, maybe do some family stuff, maybe some of my hobbies, catch up on hobbies and such. I'm into photography, maybe I'll take photos and such, um, but just... Uh, catch up on things maybe anyone else anyone planning on any spring break stuff maybe we'll do i'll probably do a family get together and we'll probably do some barbecuing as usual um grill some stuff up taking a break yep eight weeks time to take some time off eight weeks is a lot of work so that midterm after the midterm is coming some nice vacation times uh probably get some yep 
get some get some money, store that up, save it up, spend it. <laughs> and then after the spring break, that's when we start to then work on the animation stuff. So as an overview, these concepts won't make sense yet, but on the second half of the semester, we're starting to look at animation, specifically animation with tweens. We'll cover what that means, of course, when time when the time comes. Um, frame by frame animation, working with scenes, symbols, and special effects of animation. And then, of course, the final piece of the puzzle is audio, the concepts of audio. We'll have two weeks on that. Background music, sound effects, lip sync, etc. And then, looking even further away, um, week 15, final project revealed. Similar to the midterm, it will be in addition to what the previous weeks were about. And as I've shown previously from previous semesters, it is ultimately about creating a 30 second animation. We still have plenty to learn, but we're looking much more into the future. Eventually on week 15, final project will be revealed and notice, uh, basically, here's what you can plan here, Mark, um, in, uh, in May, May 6th. Okay, so we'll have the class eventually May 6th. The final project will be revealed, all the details you have to do about it. And that, that'll be a day, that'll be a very short lecture about here's the final project. And then it'll be work day. Then we will have the Tuesday if you want to do lab time. Then the Monday the 13th will be completely lab time if you want to come into class and work on your final project. And then, of course, Tuesday the 14th, um, lab time. And then Monday the 20th, completely lab time uh, or mostly lab time. And then um, actually, I got to double check on that. In the final 20th might be a final, final lab day. But the point is, there's going to be at least two weeks, probably three weeks for, to, to do the final project. We still have a lot to learn. I don't want to start to really talk about final project yet. We have a lot to learn. But I'm showing you here that, that you're going to have a lot of time to work on it. When it is revealed on the 6th, lab time on the 13th, and then it'll be due on the week of the 20th. Um, so we'll do a vote on that eventually if we want the 20th to be one more final lab day or to turn it in extra credit, et cetera. We'll figure that out later. But that's what's coming on the month of May, and then the semester ends. But it's too early to talk about the end of the semester. We're barely halfway through, but think about that as time is coming up. And remember, CIS 125 segues into CIS 126 part two of this class, where we will learn more about um, advanced drawing, painting, animation, etc., and then the video game stuff. Eventually, when you go into part two, everything that we're learning about creating this character and background and plots and animation, eventually that will then tie into making a video game, making a game about your character, making a real video game that will work on real iPhones and Androids, on real devices that will be on a real real thing that you can show your friends and family, part of your portfolio. Because what we're doing in the sequence of classes, we're building a portfolio about, I can create original characters. I can create backgrounds. I can be creative in writing. And then eventually I can do various types of animation. And then I can do video game creation. So you see how 125 and 126 add up to be this portfolio content so that then you go on to either trying to go off into the real world to get into the industry or most likely going off into the um, further education at SDSU, San Diego State, um, Art Institute, CalArts, et cetera. Have I made a game myself? Um, yes and no. Um, I mostly have focused on teaching these various concepts. And on the side, I have been working on my own game, but you know what always happens, you add to it and add to it and it's never finished and mine is never finished. So I focused more on teaching these things and working for clients and teaching things and mine never quite got finished and there's still time, but it's just that um, it's just spending so much time teaching that it uh, there's less time for the doing sometimes. Um, so that's an overview of the semester. And then a reminder that eventually in the summer, CIS 126 is where you want to continue. Um, 
enrollment for that is not available yet because we're not even halfway through the semester. But um, you'll want to continue that eventually in 126. What are good schools to continue animation? Since it's really upon a pursuit. Uh, well, like I said, the Art Institute of California. That's one of them. Art Institute. Uh, Institute of California is one of them. So there's various ones. San Francisco is the big one. Los Angeles Film School, which is also uh, visual effects and game art and such. There's also Cal Arts. That's a famous one. Uh, people like, you know, Steven Spielberg and such came from there. So Cal Arts, Art Institute. Mm, right here. Whoops. Ooh, I hadn't heard about that. Got to read about that. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So, um, CalArts, those are the ones that are focused on that. And then even things like San Diego State and UCSD have their own. So let's look here. San Diego State uh, Animation Art Program. Off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but we can go look in there. At SDSU, for example, Art Emphasis in Graphic Design, BA in Applied Arts and Sciences, various art classes, three-dimensional design, etc. in the major, 2D design, 3D design, graphics, sculpture, etc. So you can drill down there in detail, and same thing with UCSD. Obviously, the big four-year colleges in the area and beyond, uh, animation, art major. All the big colleges also have um, their department on these things. Visual arts. Various art classes, computer arts, design, introduction to art making and motion. See these fancy, these really, really fancy names. Introduction to art making, motion, and time-based art. <laughs> which of course just means um, wouldn't recommend the Art Institute. Yeah, uh, as as we just saw right there, that one was good for a while. And then now apparently something happened. So I got to read about that. I hadn't heard about that, but something happened to the Art Institute. Looking into LCAD, but wasn't sure. Uh, possibly, um, yeah, it would be better to, to maybe talk about with them, um, with the various counselors and such there at those colleges rather than me at, or or the or the counselors at our i think the call the counselors at our college are also good to be um have a have a meeting with to kind of figure out where you want to go because you know the big established four year colleges UCSD San Diego State USD etc UCLA etc those are some good ones with a department then there's some colleges that only focus on that like Art Institute, but like we're saying there as the note, the Art Institute and the University of Art, because they focus on one topic, they might have various challenges and things. And if we can maybe find an article or whatever there, Alex, that'd be nice to know. Um, so that uh, if you want to pull up an article on that about what happened, that'd be useful for us to look into. But for us at the moment, um, we have this plan of the rest of the semester, and I'll cover more as the semester goes on about what's your next steps, but as we're getting halfway through things. This particular week, we've got these items that I will use about writing and characters and such. Uh, we'll look at this together in a moment. And then uh, we've got an assignment. So let me preview the assignment, and then we'll do the main lecture on it. And we've also we're also going to put in the time for uh, extra credit, um, background critiques. But before that, uh, so the assignment. After we talk a little bit more about writing, uh, remember the assignment is due tomorrow. And according to my dashboard over here, only five have been submitted so far out of a class of like twenty five. So. I guess you're, you're all thinking very hard on your assignment that's due tomorrow, but it's due tomorrow. The first plot assignment is due tomorrow. 
Um, this week, the assignment, <laughs> that's good. This week, the, uh, the assignment's a little bit more writing. We're going to refine more aspects of your original character in, the term, in terms of writing. Of course, as I've said here, you can change your mind about this as time goes on. You're not locked into it. Things can change. That's perfectly fine. We're going to write more about a character biography. And this time, we're also going to write about something known as a drabble. And I will explain what that is in a moment. But here is going to be one of these assignments that is a public assignment. You're going to post and you're going to write about two sections of things. Create a post where you write about your character and you've been doing that a few times. So you're probably very good at it. And yeah, you can copy and paste what you've previously done. However, um, limit yourself to 100 words. So whatever you've previously written, your long essays on what your character biography is, now you've got to make sure it fits in 100 words, not characters, but words. So the point of this week to learn more about writing, but also concise writing, getting your point across quickly and effectively. I know we have all of these ideas bouncing around all the time, visually or writing-wise, but it also is very important to think about condensation and explaining things in a short manner. So you're going to write again about your character. Um, I have more examples here to give you more ideas, but limit it to up to 100 words, however many sentences that is, but up to 100 words. And for these assignments, I'm going to just use this, you know, word counter thing, you know, word count. You can get this all over the place, but there's one built into Bing right here. So I, I'll just drop in your text in here. And if it's a hundred words, you got it. If it's more than that, well, you didn't quite, uh, you didn't quite follow the instructions. So any word counter, but I'm going to use the specific one from Bing uh, to count. I'm not going to literally count it. I'll let the computer do it. So first part of it. Second part, uh, will it be okay if our response exceeds it just a bit? Nope. The assignment is the assignment is what the assignment is. So make sure you follow the details of the assignment. Part of the reason for that is, again, not just for an assignment. If you're out in the real world, in a real job, with a real boss and such, and they're asking, do this, and you don't do that, the boss is not going to like it. In a class, if you don't do what the boss is asking for, you might not get a good grade. But in the real world, you don't do what the boss is asking for, it's not about getting a bad grade. It's about getting fired. So whenever the boss is asking for a specific thing, do the specific thing uh, to, to do it right. So this is also, again, part of the idea of, um, have you heard of the idea that uh, limitations breed creativity? If you can do anything in the world, well, then you're kind of like, going with every possible direction and idea and not enough focus. If instead you have limitations, either in time or budget or, or, or um, specifics, that can help you be more creative. So yes, I will be, of course, the assignment, of course, will be graded upon the specifics of the assignment. So limit yourself to 100 words there. And then the second half of it, in the same post, you will write a drabble after we do the main lecture on drabbles, where you will write a story of exactly 100 words, no more, no less. And again, I'm going to use the automated counter here that if it tells me, yeah, you got it at 100, great, you got the points. If it says, if it says 99, that is not correct. If it says 101, that is not correct. If it says 105, that is not correct. 100 words is exactly correct. So, um, and so... That's one of the items. It has to be, a, for the second part of things here, it has to be exactly 100 words. You have to, in those 100 words, describe a setting, a character, a conflict, and a resolution. That sounds very familiar to what you did last week. But now the big requirement here, it's got to be exactly 100 words. I haven't read, finished reading people's submissions that they've submitted so far, and they're all very creative, but of course, with no limit, there's no limit. Here, there's a limit. And now you have to think about what can I do in 100 words? Can I get my point across in 100 words? I spent so much time describing my character that I ran out of time to figure out the conflict and the resolution. Well, in the assignment, you have to have a setting, a character, a conflict, a resolution within 100 words. You can give your story, your plot here, a title, but it's not going to count for the main 100 words. 
And that title also should be seven words at, at the most. And you can put headings and pictures if you want, but the text is what's going to matter for the assignment. Because it's a public assignment here, you're also going to respond to classmates. At least one, oops, I made a mistake here. I put at least one, and then I put there at least two. I think I want you to do at least two. Let me just confirm that. Uh, I want you to do two responses so that you get more perspectives from classmates. Yeah, we'll do two. Not sure why I put one there. I remember why that was the last time I taught it was in the summer and it was a shorter time. So we put one, but now we're in the regular semester. So we have a little bit more time. The responses then, of course, you'll give some feedback, basically. What did you like about their story? Are there any things that could be improved respectfully? And then at least one sentence. So in short, and we've got a lecture to talk about for the details, but in short, you're going to write a biography of your character. It can be based on what you previously wrote, but it, now it's got to be less than 100 words. Then you're going to write a drabble, which must be exactly 100 words, not less, exactly, not more, exactly, which will include a setting, a character, a plot, and an ending or a conflict. Um, usually there's conflict in the plot. Then respond to two classmates more if you want, but at least two classmates. So that's another one of these writing assignments. Rather than um, rather than uh, Adobe Animate at the moment. So making some notes here. Uh, discussion assignment on writing. Up to 100 words biography, and then exactly 100 words drabble. And I'll fully explain the drabble in a moment. That's the assignment for next Tuesday. The five of you that have submitted the assignment so far, you probably jumped right away, started to write already, got very creative. Those of you that haven't finished the assignment from last week yet, this new assignment for next week is more writing, so more practice on that. On the module overview very quickly, next week is the midterm. Plan on being in person for it. And then again, if you're having difficulties with that, send me a message on the inbox. If there's a legitimate excuse, we'll talk about it. But everyone is assumed to be in person for the midterm next week. As for this week, let's do the main lecture, and then I've, we're also going to do the um, uh, background critiques, extra credit. We'll take volunteers on that later after the main lecture. So that's what's coming for this week and next week and later today. The main lecture stuff. Okay, so... In the week seven resources, I've got all of these writing resources. Uh, how many of you have heard of the website or the app Grammarly? You probably have. If you watch YouTube, they put their ads on every single time, it seems. Tell me in the chat, have you heard of the website or app Grammarly? So it's been around a while now. It feels like maybe 10 years now. Assistance, does that sound right? Has Grammarly been around 10 years already uh, or so? But Grammarly, it's this app that helps you write, write better helps you write good. Well, they've also got a blog. And many websites that have a product also have a blog with a lot of free stuff, tips and advice and such. So from the Grammarly website, and I've got the link directly um, on Canvas, but it's over on their you know education section or somewhere product somewhere it's somewhere but from the canvas website i have directly link there uh the grammarly blog and within the blog here we have these various subsections and i'm looking at the writing tips this is several pages of articles on writing those of you that maybe are not as strong in writing there's plenty of great tips here um 
11 ways to say thank you over email, and three thank you mistakes to avoid. Uh, and there's one right there, Ludwig. Have not heard of it, but let's take a quick look. Write in, write in English at your best. So it seems to be also like a little writing helper thing with AI stuff as they are nowadays. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Uh, so the Grammarly blog here, and it's got all these articles on writing and tips and some of these are also kind of fun, like um, 22 weird words to know and love. I love lists. And let's see some of these weird words. See if you know any of these. Ballyrag, buttress, catawampus, chock-a-block, dongle, frippery, gambo, nanny. So um, there's a bunch of fun articles like this, but this is also for creativity and like, hey, what is a hootenanny? Okay, it's an informal gathering with folk music. All right, that gives me an idea to add a hootenanny scene to my story. <laughs> or there was a hullabaloo uh, when all of the characters fought each other. So articles like this, which just are a collection of interesting words, um, give you a starting point for creativity. There's a bunch of these types of articles with lists of, of interesting words. Um, let's see, 25 cool words to know in English. Abracadabra, amok, anemone, brouhaha, calliope. Wunderkind, umbra, quintessential, quibble, etc. And then of course they tell you how to pronounce it, what it means, an example. So even just for creativity's sake, the Grammarly blog, not only, you know, the Grammarly app helps you write to write better, but the Grammarly blog has a bunch of interesting articles um, for learning words and learning how to write. The ones that we care about for this particular week that will help us with our writing this week. I've got a few articles here. I'm not going to read these word for word. You should at some point. But there is the how to write a novel in seven steps, fiction versus nonfiction. What is creative nonfiction? And then nine tips for using AI prompts. So again, I'm not going to read these word for word. You should. But on each of these, I will go into them for a moment and pull out some ideas here. Specifically from the how to write a novel. What I like about this particular article, well, of course, in this class, you're not going to write a novel because this talks about that usually a novel is like 50,000 words to 110,000 words in a novel. So you're not going to write that, of course, but this is still a great article to consider about a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end with characters and settings and such. Um, they give you here kind of like a checklist as well as we've been seeing these seven literary elements. You can click on that and, and read even more. What's a literary element? Eight literary elements to know. But here we have idea, character, setting, plot, narrative, themes, conflict. So we've been working on drawing original characters, but now about writing original characters, there's a little bit here. We've been, uh, we, we have the assignment on creating an environment, a setting, a world for your character, setting, and now writing about the setting of your character. Conflict something happens. And we use that word generically. There doesn't always have to be a big battle that happens and that sort of thing. You know, think of the Studio Ghibli movies. Did any of you ever watch Kiki's Delivery Service? Kiki's Delivery Service. What's the big battle of that? What's the conflict of that? There isn't. It's Kiki growing up and going off on her own journey as a new witch. I suppose you could say at the very end, spoiler alert, you know, when the Zeppelin is going to fly off and Tambo is going to get hurt and all of that, I guess that's the conflict, but it happens in the last 10 minutes of the movie. And beyond that, it's all about story, about a girl going off in her own with her cat Gigi and, uh, you know, having a thing. It doesn't literally always need to be a conflict, but as a beginner, it is a good idea to think about it, about here's a problem that needs to be solved. You have your original idea, then you flesh out into the details, themes, and narrative. Maybe you've heard of that term, narrative, in terms of narration. 
But in terms of writing, narrative is something different. Two critical parts of a novel is plot and narrative. Uh, the bare bones plot outline gives a general sense of things. Um, how is the story told? Is it a first person point of view? Is it journal entries? Is it a linear sequence? Is it flashbacks? That relates to the narrative. How the story might be told is the narrative. The plot of what happens or the sequence of events is the plot. How it's told is the narrative. So if you've kind of sometimes heard about some of these words before, um, now here they are broken down in terms of, you know, idea, characters, setting, plot, narrative, theme, conflict, starting point for all, for the following characters, who is it, who is it about? Where does it happen? General sequence of events, how it's told. Themes is an interesting one because here, this sort of like, it just happens in a way, but if it's defined and you can actually think about it, then you can further make your story clearer. A novel's theme is the broad question it attempts to answer or the concept it aims to comment on. Uh, a novel's theme might include academic publishing pressure, isolation versus acculturation, the ownership of knowledge, humanity's place in the cosmic landscape, very fancy terms. But is it the idea? Is it about loneliness? Is it about happiness? Is it about family and camaraderie? Is it about an individual's journey? What's the theme? Themes to explore and that happen and are revealed through the character's experiences throughout the story. So this is sort of like, what is it trying to say or how is it relatable? Think about movies and art and music. Okay, let's think about music. Um, tell me in the chat, what is the saddest song that comes to mind? What is a song that really gets you in the feels and makes you, uh, it gives you an emotion of sadness, of longing, of nostalgia? Tell me one in the chat. One that comes to my mind is um, Fade Into You by uh, Mazzy Star. I don't know if you know that one. I don't, I don't want to make you sad, but you got to look this one up. It's... Um, it's such a good song. And the video is also really nice. Fade into you, Mazzy Star. Uh, classic 90s song here. Uh, Nothing's New, uh, Rio Romero, the Prince, of, the Prince of Egypt soundtrack. Wow. Oh, I, I remember seeing the movie in theaters, but I haven't heard, heard the soundtrack in a while. But here's a song that's just so sad when I hear this, but you know, I still love it. And I'm a 90s kid, so I lived through it all. And I remember when these songs came out and that one, it was just so good. And still 30 years later, however long this came out, uh, it's still an amazingly sad song. The point, though, is sadness. That is a concept that we've all experienced in various degrees, some very much, some lightly, and somewhere in between. But that is a universal theme that we've all experienced. And those of you telling me right here, these various songs... If we look these up, yeah, we're going to feel that. Even though if we've never heard these songs before, we hear these songs, we're going to get a sense of it for various reasons. We're going to get the theme of sadness. We're going to get the theme of sadness. And um, your story, your writing, does it have something relatable? Yes, I'm talking about... Um, you know, my character that has to get the power stones to release the, the gems of... of uh, uh, from the dark wizard and blah, 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 blah. But are there themes in there that are relatable beyond something that is completely unrelatable? None of us are going to go on a quest to find the gems to defeat the wizard, but there might be themes in there about friendship and love and loss and those sorts of things. On the opposite, tell me a, a song that is happy, that makes you happy, that when you hear it, you just 
You know, you you it really lifts your spirits, makes you feel good, and brings you to good memories of happiness. Tell me a happy song. Tell me a happy song that you um that you know of. I can't think of any at the moment, so which that says something about me, perhaps. But uh, if I think for a moment, I might think of a happy song. Um, but yeah, tell me a few there in the chat. Uh, so that comes back to theme. How is something relatable? That's one way to explain that. How is your story relatable to people? And then, of course, conflict. Um, what needs to be fixed or accomplished or needs to happen? And it doesn't necessarily always have to be a negative thing that the conflict is. So read it on your own. You're not going to be a writing a novel in this class, but I like that there's these sort of checklist of things and further explanation and topics. And so um, read those sections. And then um, there's their seven steps, which might be useful for yourself in these assignments too. If you haven't done the assignment that's due tomorrow, here's another thing to read that might give you ideas on writing that. And of course, this should give you ideas for then writing next week's assignment. And then in a fact all about this, broken down into basic ideas. So that's one of the links. In this particular class, we're pretty much probably all focused on fiction as a style of writing or as a genre, but there's also nonfiction. So there's a reading here, read this on your own, but this gives you the difference between fiction and nonfiction. One of them basically means it's true, and the other one is that it's not. Not that it not means it's lies, but no, fiction versus nonfiction is basically a literary genre that encompasses imaginative storytelling. It involves the creation, the creation of character settings, events, and narratives that do not exist in the real world. So versus nonfiction refers to factual stories about real people, places, and events. So the big idea here, fiction versus nonfiction, Fiction is about um, things you invent, people, places, things. And then nonfiction is about, seems like Zoom is getting weird. Everyone's lo getting logged out for some reason, and then you have to come back in. Is anyone else having some weird uh, disconnection issues? Not sure why Zoom is kicking you out, but it seems some of you are disconnecting for some reason. I don't know. Again, it's all being recorded. You're not missing anything, but I don't know. Zoom seems to be acting weird. Anyway, nonfiction about um, about things that already exist. That's the big difference. Very short answer. Read the article on your own. What's fiction versus nonfiction? Pretty much everyone in this class is going to be doing things about fiction. You're going to be creating an animation and then eventually a game about fiction, but nonfiction is the opposite of that. It's based on things that are real. And then next article here. Uh, yeah, I just asked that right now. A few people are getting kicked out for some reason on Zoom for some reason, but no problem. It's all being recorded. You'll be able to replay it back or I can repeat myself, but Zoom is being weird. So uh, creative, how did they call it here? Creative nonfiction is in the middle. You might say, oh, well, I want to do things about real life things, but then put a creative twist on it. There is creative nonfiction, kind of in the middle, in the middle of both fiction and nonfiction, borrows some real world aspects and then adds creative or inventive, invented aspects to tell a story. So maybe some of you have figured out, oh, mine is kind of in the creative nonfiction category. Based on our definitions right here, tell me in the chat, what do you think your plot is so far? Do you think it's purely fiction, 
purely nonfiction or maybe creative nonfiction in the middle? Tell me in the chat. Do you think you're on fiction, creative nonfiction, or nonfiction spectrum? Which part of the spectrum here do you think you are in your idea, ideas that you've been working on so far? Purely fiction, fiction. Yeah, that seems to be the 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 default for most people. Like, you know, the, the real world is nice, but I already live there. Let me make up something new. So yeah, most of you seem to be saying fiction. Yeah. So, oh, there's, there's a nonfiction there. Okay, cool. So read that on your own, on detail. I feel like it's fantasy is real. The scenario would likely happen. Um, yeah, that's that's a good point there too. Yeah, so it's interesting how all of you are leaning towards more of the fiction part of it. But consider also there is that creative fiction side of things. I think most people don't create nonfiction. But there's plenty of it as the article will show because look what we have listed here in terms of examples. So here's some stories of fiction, but specifically memoirs, essays. You've written nonfiction before, most likely, right? If you've taken other classes where you had to write essays or do, you know, writing for research and such, that's going to be nonfiction. If you're doing journalism, if you're in journalism classes and such, if you're writing your autobiography or a biography, if you're writing for science things, so you might have already engaged in some amount of nonfiction writing. So you've got fiction, but inspired by real life. So that might be in that creative fiction side of it, taking some real life things and jumping off of that to creative. Then we've got the whole genres of fiction. Well, that this is even in this is not even a complete list, but we've got mystery writing, romance, fantasy, magical realism, thriller, sci-fi, crime, horror. The list goes on of fiction. So this is a this is a short list, but now tell me in the chat from your ideas so far, from your plot so far and such, does your does your idea fall into these categories here? And if it doesn't, tell me what you think your category is. Out of these here, if I zoom in a little bit, do any of these kind of fit what your plot is about so far or a mixture of them? Or does it not fit here? And what would you explain it as? Tell me, tell me there in the chat, what does your particular plot lean toward at the moment? Maybe some magical realism. In the vein of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, maybe, or other such such writers, maybe a little bit of mystery crime going on. Anyone else? Do any of these genres fit into your writing, or are you off on your own? Uh, are you off on your own writing? Uh, listed here isn't, you know, here this doesn't list comedy or comedic plot and story. What else does it not list? Assistance. What which ones are we missing here? So assistance. Besides these plots, what other plots? There's comedic writing, comedy. Um, comedy plots, comedy stories. I guess relationships, family, friends, stuff. We got some fantasy with some romance, mystery and magical, science fiction and horror, drama. Yep, drama good. So that's a genre not listed here. Maybe you've got drama or dramatic aspects in your writing. Maybe you've got comedic aspects or maybe, maybe rom-com in there. All right, good. So the um, third article here that I've got, again, read, the read these in detail on your own. And then the last article here, nine tips for using AI prompts. Let me ask you in the chat, have any of you used any of the AI apps that are out there now? The famous one, of course, is ChatGPT. Oh yeah, Western, that, that's a genre there too. Anyway, have any of you used any of those apps out there? Of course, like ChatGPT, that's the famous one. But there's so many versions of them out there now. Even Grammarly has their own AI, artificial intelligence, generative you know, the kind of like the generic term for these is generative assistance. Um, have any of you used, used any of these for anything? 
yep, everyone's talking about it. Have any, have any of you used them? I personally really haven't used them either. And, you know, I'm kind of a techie person and I'm interested in it, but, you know, there's just so much to learn and do and work that I, I myself haven't really gotten into it as much as people would think. People would think, well, you know, you're into technology and you know it all, so I'm sure you've used it. Not really, not really very much. It is getting a lot of press, definitely, definitely in the last three years, maybe in the last two years or so. We're going to get our first exposure to it right now, actually. There's a... Um, Depending on the system, sometimes you need to download them or install them or whatever, but Microsoft has their own version. They call it Copilot. It's all part of this whole generative content apps. And there's an article here about how it could be useful to you. I'll get back to this one in a moment, but here's a cool thing um, that we could try together here. I'm gonna put this in the chat, but the Microsoft Copilot, I'll put it into the chat if you want to try it out too, because it's kind of fun. I know in my line of work, everyone's scared of it. All the instructors are scared of it because of course, just like any tool, it can be abused. Everyone's scared that this is the tool that students are going to use to cheat in class. And of course it has happened. Of course it will happen, but we're right in the cutting edge of it. So we'll figure it out. But um, these various AI tools can either be used to do the work for you or to help you to get to a, a result. And so if you want to try this out on your own here too, I'll show it right now here live, but Copilot, which is Microsoft's version of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is the one specific type of app, but it's all part of this genre of apps that it uses the knowledge of the universe to give you ideas. So for example, I'm here in Copilot and it says, ask me anything. So here's how I could use it. Help me write a story about a ninja from the future battling a corrupt corporation. Hey, that sounds familiar. Uh, so let's see how this helps me. And I'll say, okay, help me. I write in there. It's going to then think about it. And look at that, it's already popping up with ideas. Shadows of Tomorrow, Chapter 1, The Neon Abyss. In the year 2157, the world has transformed into a sprawling metropolis of neon-lit skyscrapers, etc. And it's going on to these various chapters and ideas and stories and, and um, dialogue and the final battle and all of that stuff. And... You know, I could copy and paste this and turn it in for an assignment of some class. But of course, this is the cheating part of it, that if I just take this and turn it in, okay, well, you didn't really think of anything here. The computer thought of it. The computer generated it. And uh, turning it in as is like this, is uh, that's the cheating part. But as a starting point to think about, okay, well... You know, these these keywords about, you know, the the CEO, um, I'm going to change that name, but the CEO was more machine than woman. Her consciousness merged with the company's AI core. You know, that's giving me ideas for my own starting point of stories. This does a job of, this takes the ideas of the, of the writing about a plot and a character, environment, themes, et cetera, et cetera, to create a story that a computer put together from pieces of knowledge throughout the world. That's basically what these whole chat GPT, G, G, chat GPT, chat GPT things are. Uh, so using AI to help you with writing all of these apps and software are tools for starting your own idea. They take, uh, anyone can take a break at any point, that's fine, and then we'll take a break officially in one moment. All of these apps and software are tools for starting your own idea, and they take pieces of knowledge from all over the world and mash it up to give you a new idea. That's basically, that's basically what all of these things are doing. They're just taking pieces of knowledge 
from all over the world and making an idea. Um, when I was practicing with, with this thing earlier, at the very end of the last time I did it, it also had at the bottom, it had um, it had it had like links and resources or something like that. And it had a, a place to, to kind of go look at more details of things. This one is not showing it for some reason, but it's got this story that came together. Give me an idea in the chat box um, that we can toss into here and see what it tells us. Uh, put it in, put it in the chat, and an, an idea, and we'll try it. But how about this? Um, uh, writing a story about a family vacation that goes wrong. Let's see what this thing thinks of. Lost in the Wilderness, The Unplanned Adventure, Chapter 1, Departure. The Hawkins family had been planning their summer vacation for months. The excitement was palpable as they packed their bags, loaded up the minivan, and set off to the Misty Pines National Park. The sun was shining, and the kids, Emma and Noah, were already arguing about who got the window seat. What, the car has one window? So anyway, that's a starting point. Um, yeah, because I won't know if you if you leave the Zoom. So, um, so the thing is, um, here I'm just putting an idea for a um, a starting point, and then the thing gets a bunch of ideas from all over the world and various novels and stuff that it grabs, and then it synthesizes it into a story. And it's not that I'm going to do this and turn it in. Of course not. There's going to be more than the 100 words that I'm looking for. But this is a good starting point um, to, to – um, this is a good starting point to to get started. Okay, a detective crime story. Let's do this. Uh, help me write a detective crime story set in 1800s England. So here's how these prompts are also very useful in terms of specificity. Uh, when you had said detective crime story, were you thinking about modern times, 1940s film noir times? Were you thinking about a futuristic Blade Runner style crime story? Were you thinking of like, you know, grim and gritty, um, you know, or like Godfather style type of crime story with detectives in there? So even that to set up a place and an idea and a story something to think about. Here I tossed it into, let's do this in the 1800s in England. Let's see what it thinks about. The Silver Locomotive Mystery, The Vanishing Coffee Pot, London, 1885. The great railroad detective, Robert Callback, stood on the platform of Paddington Station. His bowler hat sat low on his forehead and his eyes scanned the crowd. The case had piqued his interest, a rare, individually commissioned silver coffee pot had gone missing en route to Cardiff. Yep, so we got a location, we've got a character, we've got the genre, detective story, we've got a time, place, who, what, when, where, why, how, etc. You know, these things that we've been looking at before, now we're looking at it from another perspective. I'm providing this item here to play with it, to give you ideas. But again, with any technology, be careful with it. Don't let it do the work for you. You know, any tool can be uh, any 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 tool can be abused. Just like a hammer can be used to build a house, that same hammer can be used to destroy that house. This is a starting point. Let's do one more, then we'll take a break. Let's see what we get here. A Chronicle of Voyager. Let's just see what we get out of that. Sometimes you have to also give it a little bit more detail because um, we can use Copilot to do many things. So right here, I wanted to specifically tell, help me write a story about a Chronicle Voyager. You might not have fully understand what we meant without details. The Forgotten Constellation. In the year 1878... Aboard the magnificent, magnificent starship or airship Stardust Voyager, 
Captain Evelyn Thorne steered her crew through the vast expanse of the Celestial Ocean. Very creative writing there, the Celestial Ocean. Their mission to explore uncharted constellations beyond the known skies, etc. So that's um, a tool that you can use. And there's, of course, the other one, ChatGPT. And Grammarly has its own built-in one, too. I haven't used it, but I've been using the Copilot one. It's pretty cool. And um, we saw a bunch of ideas there as a starting point. And this can even go as a, to the advanced point about creating graphics um, under create. Where is it at? Under somewhere. I think you have to log in or somewhere. Somewhere there's a create an image of a cyber ninja battling her foes. There's also, not just with writing, there's also the ability for it to auto-generate graphics from pieces of concepts of the world within its mental core of images. Let's see. Let's see here. So, you know, generic cyber ninja battling foes. And uh, it generated it out of my words, you know, kind of rip off a little bit of Black Panther. Got, well, we got the lightsabers, I guess, or neon, neon lights and such. Got the battle here. It looks like they're more like together, coming together instead of battling. But you can even use it for this stuff to get visual visuals. And it even pops up here. Add more foes. Can you make the Cyber Ninjas suit red? Yeah, let's see about that. So this is what this, if you've never used it, this is what this is. This is what this chat GPT stuff is, this generative artificial intelligence um, creation software is. It's you feed it prompts, you tell it what you want, it gets pieces from over the internet. And um, here, you know, we've got, now we've got a red ninja and bad guys and... and uh, it's reminiscent of things that exist, taken from things that that don't. It all came from me typing some some words. I didn't say anything about a rainy night and such, but I guess it likes to create a rainy night because of you know battles are always cool at night in the rain. Yep. I'm sure it's borrowing ideas from all over the place, Marvel movies and classic fiction, you know, sci-fi, you know, from Philip K. Dick and um, taking pieces from Dune and pieces of everything. That's what this whole AI stuff is. It's just taking all of this human knowledge, putting pieces here and there, adding this and that, mashing it all up, and then you you get some result. Very useful as a starting point for writing. Very useful as a starting point for art, but to just use it as here's my answer. Well, that's that's the cheating part of it. That's the uncreative part of it. You didn't do that. You told it what you wanted and it made something, but you didn't make it yourself. So it's a starting point. So yeah, let's uh think about that and then we'll take a break. A couple more things to talk about, then we'll do critiques. But on your own, you are gonna read these four articles here. You could optionally use Copilot if you want. We've got two more things of, of writing to talk about after the break. And then um, critiques and then lab time and we'll wrap up. So it's 110. We'll take a 20 minute break. We'll be back at 120. I'm not going to stop the Zoom or anything. I'm going to turn off my webcam and microphone and we'll be back at 120.
All right, everyone, let's continue. We've got a little bit more to talk about, then we'll do the critiques, optional critiques. So um, this last idea here is the Drabble. And the best thing to do is to go directly to the link, which is a definition of it. Uh, yes, thank you. So here we go, the Drabble. The Drabble is a short work of fiction of precisely 100 words in length. The purpose of the Drabble is brevity, testing the author's ability to express interesting and meaningful ideas in a confined space. So this ties in directly to the assignment where you have this limitation. Remember, there's two parts of the assignment. I'll come back to that in a moment. But the second part is you have to write a version of the plot of, of your story that you've been slowly working on. You have to write a version of it that is exactly 100 words long. So again, more than that is wrong, less than that is wrong. It has to be exactly a hundred words. So there is, you know, all of these styles and genres of writing, and there's a name for everything. And so Drabble is the name, is one of the names for something that is exactly a hundred words long. Um, almost no one knows that word. And then so there's a little bit of history there and such, and then in examples and such. So within the links, I've also got Drabble examples. And it's funny, um, these are some good examples, but you know, the second one right away, that's not a Drabble. I don't know why they have it listed here, but the first one is. So within 100, 100 words here, 2 a.m., all is quiet. There's just me and the cats slinking around in the dark. I head up the street, sneaking between the pools of light until I reach my target, number 22. Hiding in the shadows of the door, I stop and listen. Perfect. No one is up. Carefully, I work on the lock, and soon the, the catch clicks open. Pause. Silence. I push the door wide and slip inside. Success. I take a moment to slip off my shoes. Sneaking into the kitchen, I start by raiding the fridge. Brian? Yes, mum? What time do you call this? So within 100 words, we have this story. We have a setting of two in the morning, a quiet, uh, quiet time. There's cats out in the dark, not necessarily saying that this is happening like in an alley outside. Maybe you get a sense of it as you further read. And come, you need to come back home. The character's coming back home, opening the door slowly, get inside, and then mom catches catches her. So um, within that short amount of space, you get a story, you get a character, you get a vibe, you get a, you get a feeling. And as I said, when I do the grading, the, um, the grading of at least of exactly 100 words, I'm just going to use... This built-in word counter here, that's 100 words. If yours then just has one more word that's not following the requirements of the assignment or the, the spirit of the Drabble, and um, that's not what I'm looking for. It's got to be 100 words exactly. So this word counter, you can use that. It's also built into Google Docs, and it's built into... It's built into Canvas as well as you're writing in there. It'll give you a word count. You can double check it here on the word counter. But this type of story, which is very, very short, very confined, you might think, I can't get my point across in 100 words. The point is not to say every detail of things. The point is you have a limited amount of space, and can you do the requirements of... Uh, setting, character, conflict, resolution. Character, place, beginning, middle, and end. Not with every detail, but can you get it across in a very short space? Further looking at more examples, again, I'm going to skip this one. This is clearly not a Drabble. This next one, I think, is 101 words. It's not quite a Drabble, but almost correct. Yeah, it's 101 words. So they would not get the perfect grade. But if we were reading that one, my footsteps ring out hollowly amidst the emptiness. The world around me is ravaged, deserted. They haven't been here for so long, but the evidence is still clear. There was once 
This was once someone's home. The detritus of this past existence still lingers, a broken doll amongst the rubble, a shattered photo frame, its pictures yellowing now with age. There is still life here. Bugs crawl on the floor, ignoring my passage. Creepers and vines entangle the walls fed by the dripping water from the broken roof. It wasn't death that stalked here and left this devastation. It was merely time. Now, this isn't quite following, again, that it has an exact plot, but it is kind of following, following along with setting a story and a character. Notice the character is not named, but there's a character happening here, the first-person point of view. And it doesn't have to be that these stories are first-person point of view. It could be third-person point of view describing someone else. So don't think that a drabble has to be first-person. It's just a hundred words. So definitely read these on your own. And the article there on Wikipedia, those are going to be related to the assignment. Further part of the assignment is, again, writing about your character. That one has the limitation of up to 100 words. It can be 10 words, I guess. But if it's more than 100, then it's not right. So your biography of your character, well, that's okay, Zoom is acting weird. Um, your biography has got to be less than 100 words, up to 100 words. But the travel has to be exactly 100 words. And what I've got for more ideas on writing character biographies and about characters is here in the week seven resources. There's a section here. So, for example, who knows the character Squirrel Girl? It's a Marvel character. So here's the official Squirrel Girl biography from officially Marvel.com. And it talks about the character, biography, etc., powers, etc. So here's another way to kind of think about writing about a character, you know, the stats of the character about them. This is more than a hundred words, but getting ideas here, you know, have you thought about place of origin of your character? Maybe your plot at the moment is taking place at a certain place, but have you thought of what is the background of the character? Where did they come from? Things like education. And then further explanation and a little bit of graphics and such. So you can um, you can go look at officially at all the Marvel characters to get ideas. It's all superhero stuff, sure, but it's also ideas for for more characters like tell me all about the character Abyss or Acrobat, Aegis. You know, all the characters are here. This is 78 pages full of characters. You know, tell me about Zarathos. And Zalcor hasn't come out in any of the Marvel movies yet, but one day, what's Zalcor? Um, Milos Abyss has had 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 learned of an ancient Zalgodian legend, the tale told of a supposedly mythical being by the name of Zalcor, who was also known as the Granter of Wishes, etc. So, just examples from Marvel about their various characters. And to not play favorites, I've also got some DC characters. So uh, Atrocitus is this character over here, biography, stats, etc., related to other characters, related to Green Lantern, for example. And then further, you can see how DC gives you biographies on all their hundreds of characters. Same sort of way, the famous ones, of course, but then going on to the less famous ones like... Like uh, Simon Stagg or uh, Stephen Shin or um, etc. TDK Tony or or Taki Tani. So that one hasn't appeared in any of the movies yet, I think. And um. Just more things to look at, more ideas. That's all about what these lectures on creativity last week and this week are. This is not a this is not a writing class. We have a whole department on that. But these two weeks, I wanted to cover aspects of writing. 
creating plots and stories and ideas. And all of you have some amount of that that you have experience in, and there's been added to the various assignments in various ways. But now we are really, um, you know, focusing it in for a couple more assignments. So you've got your own reading to do on these various links on your own, which then tie into the assignment. That one's due next week. The one that was given last week, it's due tomorrow. And this one's due next week. If you haven't done the one from last week, now you've got even more ideas to consider. And then how that ties into next week's assignment. The, this week's assignment that is due next week. So uh, I'm going to end the, the lecture in a moment, and then we'll do our critiques. Those are going to be optional. For those, you can stay for them if you want or not. There will be extra credit if you do volunteer for background critiques. We'll cover that in a moment. But uh, let me pause here. Questions and comments, any clarifications on anything, either on the chat or the microphone, before we end the main lecture for today. Questions, comments, yes or no? Yes. So for the midterm next week, you said we're doing a test on what we learned, like um, drawing our characters, the environment, and now our, our brainstorming. Yes, exactly. Those three big ideas, that's what's coming up for next week. Yep. For the and, midterm. And it won't, it's not going to be a lot of questions, will it? No. But it'll be, uh, depending on how much time it takes people, they can take as little or as long as they want within the whole class time. So there's no sort of time limit. So so uh, that's that's the variation there. Okay. Um, well, I have been, I've been using Animate like, and the, my brainstorming skills for a while. And so I hope that, so I'm sure I'm, this won't, I'm sure this won't be a problem for me. Personally. Yeah, uh, if you feel comfortable with what we've been doing so far in using the software and writing a little bit, you should be okay on the midterm, yeah. Sorry. All right, any other questions or comments, anyone else, before we go into the critiques? Yes, on that question, uh, is it a private question or public question? If you ask me as a private, I might not be able to respond in public, or you want me to answer it privately. Private. Okay. If it is a private question, it would be better to send it to me on the inbox here so I can give you a better private response. Uh, if you write it right now in private like that, I can see it, but I might not be able to respond to you unless I type it. Obviously, I'm not going to say it out loud if it's private. So um, you can ask privately, but it might be better on the inbox. Any other questions? Anyone else? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the recording at this point. Uh, we'll go into critiques. And so this was another week of writing, writing material.